and welcome to this episode of On Maths. Today we're looking at algebraic fractions. Half of you will like it, the other X might not. Enjoy! And welcome to this episode of On Maths. So we're looking at algebraic fractions today. So first thing we're looking at is how to simplify them. So we're giving one algebraic fraction and we're trying to cancel it down. Then we're going to try and look at adding them, subtracting them, and then seeing how we can try and answer some questions all based on algebraic fractions. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so in these questions we're looking at simplifying these fractions. So let's go through the first one. Now, the first one, um, we're looking at the things top and bottom that we can divide top and bottom by the fraction by. So the numbers are nice and easy. 6 and 2, we can both divide by 2. So that will leave 3 there and 1 there, which I'm not going to write. Uh, might as well write. I could just write it. Okay, looking at the next one. There's x squared and there's an x. So I can divide them both by x. So x squared divided by x is just x and x divided by x is just 1. Well, we've already got the 1 there, so I don't need to put it in again. And y cubed and y squared, well, again, I can divide top and bottom by y squared. And I'll just get rid of that as well. So my answer to that is 3xy. Now, the bottom of the fraction is 1, so I don't need to write it. OK, with the next one, we've, technically speaking, the top and bottom of a fraction, we could put a bracket around. So I'm going to do that. And I'm looking for something at the top and bottom I can divide by. Well, I can divide top and bottom by x plus 3. And we can do this with brackets. Now, when I divide the top by x plus 3, it just leaves 1. And technically, the bottom is x plus 2 times 1, which is just x plus 2. So that leaves me with 1 over x plus 2. Notice I don't need the bracket anymore because it serves no purpose. I could put it in brackets if I wanted to. Okay, this next one's slightly more complicated because I can't find anything that I can divide x, 5, x squared and minus 25 by. Um, be tempted not to pick 5, for instance, because it's got to cancel each term, so I can't divide the 5 and the 25 by 5 unless I could also divide the x and the x squared by 5. Okay, remember, when I say top and bottom of the fraction, what I really mean is all the terms in the fraction. Okay, so I'll need to do something here. Now, that bottom one looks very suspicious. x squared minus a square number. That's definitely a difference of two squares. So I need to factorise the bottom. So I'm going to leave the top as it is, and I'm going to factorise the bottom. Now, I know the rules with difference of two squares. I put the x at the start of each of the brackets and then I put the square root at the end and one of them is going to be a plus and one of them is going to be a minus. Now if I put brackets around the top one you'll notice that I can divide top and bottom by the x plus 5 which leaves 1 over x minus 5. OK, pause the video and have a go. OK, so let's do the first one. 10 and 5, I can divide them both by 5. Now, x to the power of 5 and x to the power of 3, I can divide them both by x to the power of 3. So that leaves that as 2. Gets rid of that. Now, this one's a bit more complicated. I start with 2, and when I divide with in, uh, indices, I take away the powers. So I can technically divide these by y to the power of 5, and that will leave minus 3 there. So you could have the answer of 2x squared y to the power of minus 3. Or what you could do is say 2x squared over y to the power of 3. Both of them will to give you a, a mark. OK, let's have a look at the next one. Now, don't forget we can put brackets around the fractions uh, at the numerator or denominator. And I'm going to cross off that x plus 7. And that's just going to leave me with 1 at the top and x minus 3 at the bottom. OK, last one. Well, I can't divide top and bottom by anything yet until I factorise the bottom. 
it's a difference of 2 squared, so that's going to be x plus 4, x minus 4, either way around. Okay, I can make sure I put brackets around the top to remind me that I can just cross them out. And I should really put a 1 on these. So that equals 1 over x minus 4. Okay, so in these questions we're doing the same thing, but we've got to do uh, a little bit of work first. Now, the last one we had to um, uh, factorise, and all of these we have to factorise. So, first of all, we're going to start by factorising where possible. So, I can factorise the top, and I'm fine. I know that the first thing in both the brackets will be x. So, two numbers that add to 5 and times to be able to make 6. So that's going to be 2 and 3, and they're both positive, over, and then it already gives us x plus 3. And this is a little cheat. If it gives you the bottom as x plus 3, you know one of the brackets at the top has to be x plus 3. And, yeah, it's not a cheat, but we know we can use it. And we can cross off the x plus 3s from the top and bottom, and because the bottom of the fraction is 1, we can just write the top, which is now just x plus 2. So all of that algebra was basically saying x plus 2. So if you were given that on the uh, on the exam, right, substitute in 3, and you'd sit there on your calculator for a while trying to work it out, You, I can just tell you now the answer is 5. Genius, right. Let's have a go at the next one. So the difference of 2 squares again. So it's going to be x plus 4 and x minus 4. It's a nice and easy start. Now... When I'm looking at the bottom, I know one of the brackets will either be x plus 4 or x minus 4. So just bear that in mind. So let's have a look. Two numbers that add together to make 2 and times together to make minus 8. Uh, I'm thinking, well, what, it's going to involve the number 4. So one of them's going to involve the number 4. And to get the 8, I need the 2. And to get the plus 2 there, I want that 4 to be positive and the 2 negative. Otherwise, it would be a minus 2x. And then I'm just going to cross off the bracket that's the same top and bottom. So I'm left with x minus 4 over x minus 2. And you can't get any simpler than that. Okay, last one is a little bit harder. But because I want to kind of cheat a little bit, I'm going to do the bottom fraction first because I find it a bit easier. So we've got x we've got x, okay, so they've got to add together to make 3 and times together to make 2. So the only way we can do that is 1 and 2. Now I can cheat a little bit here because I know that the one, one of the brackets at the top is going to be either x plus 1 or x plus 2. Um, now I know that there's going to be a 2x and an x because there's no other way of getting that 2x squared. And I did show you another method in a different video of doing these, but I'm just going to do it kind of trial and error because the numbers are quite small. So let's have a think. Uh, I need two numbers to multiply together to make three, so that's going to be one and three. If I put the three in the second bracket, it will times by the two and it will just get too big. So I'm going to put the three here. Now, looking at the bottom, I know that one of the brackets will be x plus one. And so to get the negative three there, I need that to be minus. Now, if it takes you a little bit longer to get that bracket using the method I showed you in a previous video, then that's absolutely fine. You can take your time with it. Okay, so we've got the x plus 1 at the top and bottom. And that leaves me with 2x minus 3 over x plus 2. Okay, pause the video. Have a go. Okay, so uh, on question 1, we can see that the bottom is x plus 1 so we're looking out for that at the top so we're going to have two brackets both beginning with x and we're looking for two numbers that add together to make 4 and times together to make uh, 3 so that's going to be 1 and 3 and we can cancel the plus 1s which just leaves x plus 3 Okay, this next one, uh, difference of two squares at the top, so it's going to be x plus 6, x minus 6, and then the bottom one, 
both the brackets will start with x. Okay, so two numbers to add to give to make five times to give to make minus six. Uh, so we're gonna have well, we're looking at the top. One of them's got to be a six, so we might as well start off with that one. And if I, it's got times to give to make a minus six, so it's gonna be six and one. And one of them's got to be negative, but it's got to add to give to make five. So if we take away the 1 and add the 6, then that will make the 5. OK, cross off the same bracket top and bottom. And we're left with x minus 6 over x minus 1. Brilliant, OK. Now I'm going to do the bottom one first, so I can have an idea of what the bracket will be at the top. So two numbers that multiply to give it to make minus 6 and add to give it to make 1. Um, so it's going to be 3 and 2, I think. And it's a positive one, so it'll be a plus 3 and a minus 2. OK, and the number at the top. So this could be a 2x and an x, because that's the only way of getting 2x squared. Um, now, they've got a times to give to make minus 3. Um, now, hmm. So, it's slightly harder now. Now, I need to get that 5. So if I put a 3 here, that would make 6. And then if I take away 1 here, let's have a look. So 2x squared, that would make 6x uh, on the outside and minus x on the inside, which would get to the 5. And then 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. And we cross off the same bracket top and bottom. And I'm left with 2x minus 1 over x minus 2. OK, so we're going to add and subtract with algebraic fractions. And the best thing to do to start off is just think, right, what would you do if they were numbers? Well, if they're numbers, say a third plus a quarter, then the first thing to do is make sure that the bottoms are the same. Well, how do you know what the bottoms would be? Well, one method of doing it is by timesing them together, and that shows you what the common denominator is. Now. It doesn't always give you the best or the, the smallest um, common denominator, but it always works. So how do I times 3? Well, what do I times 3 by to get to 12? Well, 4. So I'm going to times the top and bottom of the first fraction by 4. And the same with the next one, 4 times 3. So I'm going to times top and bottom by 3. So when we add that together, we add the tops and keep the bottoms the same. Now, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but with algebra. We're going to think, well, how can I get to the bottoms the same? Well, the first question, the bottom's already the same. So we've done the hard bit. And all we need to do is add the tops. There we go. It's that easy. Now, the next one, well, what are the bottoms going to be? Well, the bottoms are going to be that 7 times the x plus 3. And it's really important to think of that x plus 3 in brackets. So it's going to be 7 times x plus 3. And the next fraction, we want 7 times x plus 3. OK, so let's have a look what happens. So the first fraction, I need to times top and bottom by 7. So 2 times 7 is 14. The next bracket, I need to times top and bottom by x plus 3. So that's going to be 5 brackets x plus 3. OK, now the bottoms are the same. We just add the tops. So it would be 14 plus now I'm going to expand the bracket, 5x plus 15, all over 7 brackets, x plus 3. Now let's have a look, 14 plus uh, 15 is uh, 29, plus 5x over 7 bracket, x plus 3. Now I think to myself, well, can I factorise the top? No, not really. Uh, can I divide them on by something? No, not really. So that's as simple as it gets on that fraction. And you could have put the 5x first and the 29 after. That's absolutely fine too. Now the last one, um, to get the common uh, denominator, it's just going to be the first bracket, oh, sorry, the first fraction's denominator times the second fraction's denominator. So it looked like that. And so we're, that's going to be the common denominator. So it's x plus 2 x minus 3, x, and we're going to do the next fraction, x plus 2, x minus 3. OK, so to get that uh, first fraction, so that the denominator is with the times x minus 3, I'm going to times by x minus 3, 
which is just x minus 3 because it's 1. And the next one is going to be 2 brackets. And what if I times that by x plus 2? OK, so the answer will have this as the denominator. And I'm going to take away uh, the numerator. So we've got x, take away 3, take away 2x, take away 4. So it will look like this, x minus 3, minus 2x, and minus 4, because that um, 2 on the outside of the bracket, because we're taking away, is going to be a minus 2. And so let's finish that off. So x take away 2x is minus x. Uh, minus 3 take away 4 is minus 7. And then all of that is x over x plus 2, x minus 3. And I didn't close the bracket before, which I need to do. Now, um, there's nothing I can factorise the top with, there's nothing I can cancel top and bottom with, so that's my simplified answer. OK, have a go. OK, so to do the first one, well, the bottom's already the same, so it's nice, and we just add the tops. There we go. Next one, I need to get the bottom, so it's 3 brackets x plus 2. So 3 brackets x plus 2, and I need to times the top by 3, so that would be 6, plus, and then to get this, so it's 3 brackets x plus 2, uh, I'm going to times it by x plus 2, so it's 2 brackets x plus 2, or 2x plus, and so it's going to be 4. Okay, so we're going to add the tops, so it would be um, 2x plus 10 over 3 brackets x plus 2 and actually technically I can put the top in brackets again there we go okay last one I'm going to have the bottoms and so the way you can write this is you can actually just do it in one fraction initially so I'm, going to see, I'm kind of doing two steps at once here. So I'm going to times that 2 by x minus 2. And I'm going to times that 1 by x plus 3. And so when I expand the top, it will be 2x minus 4. Take away x, take away 3, because there's a minus on the outside of that bracket. Uh, over x plus 3 x minus 2 and 2x take away x is x minus 3 take away 3 is minus 7 over x plus 3 x minus 2 now you might be tempted to expand the brackets but that's not simplifying the fraction so you want to keep any brackets in uh, if you have any Thank you very much for watching this Topic Busters. If you enjoyed this one and want to see more, please look at our YouTube account. Just type in On Maths on YouTube and we come up. Uh, otherwise, go to the website onmaths.com and you can uh, have a go at all of our predictions, Topic Busters, Demon Questions, Minimox and countless other things. Thank you very much.